So let's start where we did before. And Tim, I'd love for each of you guys to say when you started at Channel 7 and how long you've worked here. Tim? Well, I started in 1978, and it was I was just out of whatever I was doing. I was a kid. And I was here four years, and I went to ABC Sports. And then I came back when Robert Albritton took over. Uh, his dad had bought the station, and, and he was the one that originally hired me. But the second time, Robert was trying to get a group of people back together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was fun. It was, it's was it been a great time in my life. And those, those 10 years, the second time, they were fabulous. We had a lot of fun. Oh, and, my and gosh, you, did we have fun. When you started the first time, you had a funny story about it because you were doing radio. Well, Joe Albritton bought the station, and I'm doing uh, the sports with Harden and Weaver on WML Radio. And he bought WML Television. And he says, I want you to be my sports director. And I said, I've never been on television before, only radio. He says, well, just do what you do on radio. You'll be great. Yeah. So that was the start of it. So. Very good. And Paul, how about you? What year did you start at 7 uh, News? I started in 72, um, actually started doing television and radio. Uh, and I had never done radio before. I had done television, <laughs> just kind of the opposite of you, you know, in terms of doing what I did first. And I enjoyed it. It was great. And then you had to do both uh, at the point. Uh, Mr. Auburn owned both stations, mm -hmm. and uh, television stations and radio. So I did both for a while, but then finally they turned me loose. To, <laughs> Remember Eddie Walker? Uh, Eddie Walker was blind. Oh. Oh, yeah. And he, he asked me to take him to see an Orioles game. And we sat behind home plate. He says, you do the game and broadcast it for me. The first time, I'd never done anything yeah. like that before. He says, Tim, television is just like talking to a blind person. You just describe the action. <laughs> and I mean, he was right. He was great. Yeah, he's a great guy. Great Tremendous guy. human yeah, being. Yeah, he was. He and, he and Willard both. And how long were you here, Paul? What year did you retire from uh, Channel 7? 2003, I think. So what is that? Uh, 30, almost 30 years. So yeah, years. 30 years? Yeah. All yeah. right, Kathleen, your whole TV career, <laughs> you're really such a unique situation because we hear about people moving around a lot into different markets. And you were here from the beginning. You started as, a, as an intern, is that correct? So I came to uh, Channel 7 right out of college, 1976. And I started as a writer and researcher on a brand new TV show called 730 Live. Paul Berry was the host uh, of that show and um, kind of worked my way behind the scenes for about five years until uh, 1982. And I'd sort of gotten the appetite to be on the air and I would freelance on the weekends um, doing you know, stories like parades and fires and different things. And uh, finally in 1982, they hired me to be Paul's co-anchor on the five o'clock news. And so I started on the 5 o'clock, and then at one point we were doing the 5, 6, and 11 o'clock news every night. I think I did every show. Is there any show that they ever had on this television <laughs> from 1950 to I don't think that so. I, that I didn't do. I think or you did, did them all. Part. I enjoyed and it. You, so, like Paul, I was here for 30 years, yeah. the you know, first five um, behind the scenes, and then 25 on the air. Yeah. And I also hosted a show called Working Woman, which, mm -hmm. was, great uh, which was first nationally syndicated, then internationally yeah, syndicated. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you uh, took over the Working Woman franchise, which was wonderful because in the 90s women were just really breaking into so many careers mm -hmm. and so we had a chance to profile and showcase some of the challenges but also the amazing women uh, that you saw starting their careers. And yeah. that's what's fun to talk to you guys because so many of the things that we still do here today are things that you all started here yeah. uh, so many years ago and Paul we've talked to you about this before but this on your side brand is something you developed yep. and here we are decades later still doing every it. promo has on your side in it and do you remember why that came about and what what you wanted to accomplish yeah with a it. couple of things let me just before we get to let, let me just say a moment about Renee because yes. we're talking about the, the show the women that were involved Renee Poussant who everybody will remember and the three died. of us all work yeah with we her. all work with her yeah. and, I was her producer you guys anchored with oh her. Yeah, yeah yeah we loved it she was great but yeah the, the seven on your side we were getting so many letters Allison from people who were having all kind of difficulties and we weren't the first to come up with the concept with the idea but how we did it, uh, they uh, were very kind of relieved to me. So they put together a program that will work. And that's how we started to put together Seven on Your Side. I, you know, I thought it was important to tell the story of, uh, of whatever somebody might be suffering from or with. Mm -hmm. uh, and related to, a, to the current audience, to the people watching. And that's what we did. And so the, the, the concept was to make it something that you 
you could learn from. All right, did it happen to you? Well, here's what we did. Here's how we solved the problem, and hope you, hopefully you learn from that. By they the way, didn't. in those days, in those days, you would go out on the street with Paul Barry, <laughs> and every absolutely every uh, older woman, young person, <laughs> they'd say, oh, "It's Paul Barry," <laughs> and they'd even imitate how he would sign off that franchise. How did you do it? Seven on your side. Yes, this is Paul Barry. Seven on your, your side. side. You know, this oh, guy we got to do that. This now. guy was always creative. Mm -hmm. When I, I told you I came over as a kid, and so we went out to dinner one night after the show at the Cap or whatever that place was called. Oh, under yeah, Channel yeah, under, Seven. Yeah. Capricorn. <laughs> and I said, How am I going to compete with George Michael, who had just come to four? He had all the video in the world, and we didn't. Over at uh, nine, Glenn Brenner was like Henny Youngman. He was the funniest human being I'd ever seen, and a nice guy. So I said, how am I going to compete with those guys? He says, well, you're an athlete. He says, challenge everybody to challenge you to any sport. So we started Challenge Tim. Yep. And it was another, it was like Paul. You couldn't walk down the street with somebody yelling, hey, Challenge Tim. By the <laughs> way, he was a local football hero, right. too. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. I was going to bring that up. None of them I mean, have. Right. You have, uh, you've been a fabric of this community for a long time. You were a local football player. You did the local sports. Then you went off and, and did national sports. And, you know, my husband lived on the West Coast, and he used to love to watch you doing football games. So people out there were yep. seeing you all over the country. And then you came back back again, um, as we reflect on sort of the 75th anniversary, what does that mean to have been and continue to be part of the community in that way? i tell you what, I'm truly blessed because I always wanted to, I, I was born and raised in Washington, D.C., went to St. John's College High School, always wanted to keep my foot here. Harden and Weaver was the group I worked with on, on radio, the Hall of Famers, and they dominated the ratings. But one thing they told me, and they were dead serious, they said, always keep your Washington connections. And so I tried to do that. Even when I was doing network television, I tried to mm -hmm. do radio or do television yeah. here in Washington. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very important. And people have always, my, my career was like Forrest Gump. I mean, it just happened, but <laughs> I'm the luckiest guy in the world. But I have to tell you, People have always been so good to me. The viewers, the listeners, they, they've been great. Mm -hmm. Well, but, but you've been great to them. The, the beauty of, of, of our team was that we had regular people who were just like you out there listening. We felt that way. Whether it was Tim, all of our programs were related in a way that said, hey, I'm you, you're me, let's do this and, and talk. You did every, everything you did. So yeah. I think I think um, the the people who worked at the station really felt like a very small family, Absolutely. and this family felt so much part of the Washington community, yeah. mm -hmm. and the community embraced us that way. And that's what Seven on Your Side really meant. It was we are you, you are us. We are all part of one family, um, advocating right. for everybody. That's right. That's and right. what are some of your favorite memories, Kathleen, when you look back at your career at Channel Seven and working? your way through the different jobs that you had here and then ultimately you know when you retired from Channel 7 you were the main anchor what are some of your your favorite memories or people you worked with or things you did I think we all loved the time we were together on the set uh, people don't realize that during every commercial break there's relationships and right. stories and mm -hmm. everything going on so you become really good friends with the people you work with and you really share every part of, of your life um, I had three children um, uh, during the time I was on the air I was the first woman in our newsroom on the air to have a baby and you know Jane Polly was doing that at the networks and and various people but right. to share that experience you know and for people to see you getting bigger and bigger and then <laughs> the, the the camera crew coming when you had the baby in the hospital <laughs> the day you'd had the, the baby all the viewers you become know? godparents <laughs> and and so you go out on the street and people will say well how's how's little caroline doing yeah, or so how's how are michael and they thomas doing yeah. by name and we were having name. kids together yeah. all yeah. of us mm -hmm. you know uh, during that that process yeah. so i love that i love the sense of family uh, that we all had but talk, then stories too talk about sports heroes she was a tennis player out of stanford <laughs> that's, that's right, right. Yeah. yeah and well when you mention this idea of family and you know i have to say from my perspective when i started here you were such a mentor to me and and all of the people who had been here set the standard of how to treat the people coming in and you always made me feel supported and I remember when I started doing the morning show you were one of the first people to say to me I heard about your new gig I'm so excited for you that's going to be a fantastic place for you to grow and and I think that's something Channel 7 has always 
done so well is to to bring the people in inside the station but people can feel that yeah. when they watch yeah. i think they can i know with tim everybody <laughs> could tell how much Pex fun <laughs> no, you were how not. much you were fun just, we no. had on That's set right. together yeah, we did. and we the did. laughs and and just that you care about the people that you're sitting next to well, well there was no television but there was no the medium we were all the same so if you were watching at home or you on a, from our side or your side, it was all just one big happy family. Right. And I think people felt that way. I think yeah. television is very truthful. And so uh, when you're watching as a viewer, you can tell you know, what the people are that are presenting to you, uh, what That's they're right. like. You mm -hmm. can tell by how they report a story, uh, whether they have empathy, you know, whether they, they really care. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that, um, you know, that's why Channel 7 was really successful all those years, was that I think that's there right. was a, uh, an authenticity that always came through. Yeah, I agree Absolutely. with that. I Just mean, the fact that you're inviting us back here, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you to look tell at these you, stories, too. You look at you three, you're the same off the air as you on the air. I mean, it's, it's who you are. That's it's, right. it's, me so too. Very natural. And, and uh, to this day, people come up to me and say, I'm glad you started that seven on your side because, you know, I told somebody if they didn't do what they were supposed to do, <laughs> I was going to call seven on your side. I said, well, we haven't been on there for years. At least I have. Well, you don't have to be on there. The unit is on, and, and it still works. Mm -hmm. It works for people because we made a unit that they believed in. They right. truly believed in. And being part of a local station, you know, you are experiencing what that area is experiencing. So when there is a snowstorm, you're also having a hard time, you know, getting into work. Mm -hmm. um, when 9-11 happened, you know, that affected us and our families. Um, and uh, so here we were racing into the station early in the morning, uh, didn't go home at all that night as we were reporting um, locally on what was happening at the Pentagon. I remember at the end of the day, at 11 o'clock, I suddenly realized I had forgotten to call my own children who were in school. <laughs> it just, you know, because I was so um, uh, focused on the, the news story we mm -hmm. were presenting, and I was listening to my voicemails at the end of the day, and there was a call from each of my kids saying, Mom, don't worry about me. I got to ride home. I'm going to be okay. I just hope you're okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, so we experienced 9-11, the, uh, the, the sniper. Um, that you know was shooting randomly around the area. We experienced those with, as members of the right. community with, with the with community. You, everything Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. You know? I'm just seeing myself on. I'm just a fat head. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just noticing after all these years, been sitting on my on my butt. I'm just as fat no, as I can be. Please. Well, I loved it. I mean, it was great. But look today, man, what happened? And gray hair, our, our my teddy God. Bear, our teddy bear, Paul. <laughs> our teddy bear, Paul. Paul introduced me one time at a banquet. He says, one thing you can say about Tim Brandt, he's not two-faced. Because if he was, he wouldn't be wearing the one he has on. <laughs> <laughs> so what about, I asked Kathleen some of her favorite memories. What about you, Tim? What, what do you remember so many. fondly I mean, sitting, about? Sitting on the set waiting to do sports. Yes. Kibitzing with you and Leon and, and my days before that with Paul and Kathleen. I mean, they're right. It was a family. Mm -hmm. and, it, and we had the same kind of interaction that families have, whether it's two-faced or whatever. I mean, it's <laughs> just who we were. But it's, it was great. It was, it was yeah. so much fun. I said that to Janet today as I was leaving to come do this. Your wife, She of says, course. she says, just talk about how much fun it was. Yeah. And I said, yeah, well, I want to see if my office is still there. <laughs> Well, I was laughing because Tim said somebody was in my parking spot when I got here today. <laughs> I said, we love you, Tim, but we haven't kept your parking spot open all these years. Well, that was one of the first things that happened to me when I got here. Do you remember this? You said, uh, how'd you do in your negotiations? I said, I don't know. All right. You said, did you get a parking space? <laughs> you remember that? I do. I went right down and got a parking important. space. I got a parking space. Important. That is very important. And Paul, how about you? Looking back on your years here, yeah, yeah. what are your fondest memories? The ability to make a difference, a positive difference in the lives of the people that we serve. Not only were we broadcasting to them, but we were able through our unit to touch these people. You know, when people call you and say thank you for saving me or helping my mom, it, today I get people to say, you know, you, you said something about my mom, or they'll tell me something that I said to them. Wow. Uh, that is, the, 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 it's a wonderful feeling when you walk down the street and people come and say, you made a difference in my life. You made it, you made, yeah. you, you, you were, I remember you for, or your kid, and they tell them the names, they tell me the names of my children mm -hmm. because they watched us, and I know the same thing with right. you. They talk, and I don't know, but did, did you have any babies while you were there? <laughs> And how many grandchildren do you yeah. have you now? Know, it's it's 11, 11 grandchildren. grandchildren. 11. The oldest is six, the youngest is six weeks. Oh my That's goodness. Wonderful. That's wonderful. So for me, <laughs> that memory, mm -hmm. uh, to have that kind of relationship with my audience, 
and they know me. Even today, years later, they, you know, you wonder, mm -hmm. well, will they remember? I've been on the air for 15 or 20 years, and I get people to call me. Yeah. They all call, help. It's the Irish in you that's coming out. <laughs> you think it is? Yes, I do. <laughs> I get a wee bit of that down. Well, <laughs> I love hearing all of this because what, it, what strikes me is this idea that the more things change, the more they stay the same. And we've all seen so much change in our lives, in our yeah. business. Yeah. It's completely different yeah. than it was back when we started but this sense of being part of something bigger being part of the community and making a difference that has stayed the same and just the fact that you guys are back here with us now um, I think well, we thank you for the invitation. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I was absolutely. really surprised. I didn't think this would ever happen. This woman. <laughs> it's an awesome responsibility, you know, that um, you and others here carry to this day but um, you're really a role model and it's such a, um, a blessing but also responsibility when you're on the air. Mm -hmm. uh, people are looking up to you to tell them the truth, um, but they're also looking up to you to sort of be a, um, uh, you know, a guidepost as to what maybe they can accomplish mm -hmm. in their careers yeah. and do. Yeah. So on this last, you know, last little round of questions here, 75 years, uh, what, how, what would you say Channel 7 represents to you? How would you sum it up in just like the simplest terms. I think they said it all. They said Channel 7 was family, is family. I mean, when I see you like today, I mean, we were just over your house not too long ago. I mm -hmm. mean, it's it's that kind of relationship that carries through. And, and to me, it's where I started, it's where I ended. It's, you know, so it's family. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Paul? What sums up Channel 7 for you? I think um, uh, the, uh, the place to go to, uh, we all need a place where we can go and feel comfortable. And I think uh, our audience feels comfortable when they come to Channel 7. It's not just a place out there. It is the place. And that's how I always look, look, try to make it from my point of view. And I think we did it to some degree. Mm -hmm. And Kathleen? Yeah, for me, I think it's, a, it's an institution in a city like Washington. Um, yeah. uh, you know, we are there to tell people what they need to know to live better lives. And uh, it certainly enriched my life being part of Channel 7. Thanks, you guys.